Already dead sellers are dead sell lovers. Here's a few tips and tricks to help get you started. Let's start with a few basics to kick things off. To start, you should know that there are three damage types in dead cells, each represented by a color. Brutality is red, tactics purple, and survival green. Knowing this is important because it's how weapons, items, skills, mutations, and attributes are all assigned and work together. In general, try to stick to one or two colors for everything. We'll go over this a little more later on in the video. Take your time, learn the basic layout and features of each map, and get to know the enemies you come across. Take advantage of any items you find along the way, even if you have to wait out their usage timer. Use your items or ranged attacks and items to slow or otherwise distract enemies while you attack them. Ice bows, traps, grenades, turrets, and other such items can both inflict damage and in some cases take aggro, absorbing damage while giving you the time needed to do your thing. This works particularly well when attacking groups of enemies. Watch and listen for signs of attack as each enemy makes some sort of gesture or noise announcing his attention to strike. Dodge, jump, trap, or otherwise avoid incoming damage, and then quickly return the favor. Collect all of the scrolls you could find as this is how you increase your damage and your hit points. Explore the whole map and always keep a lookout as on occasion killing an enemy will drop a scroll, so kill anything that moves if you can. When selecting which damage type to apply the bonus to, try to focus on the color that your weapon, skills, and items use, and at times that color won't be available, so consider the color that gives you the biggest hit point buff. The element of surprise is huge. Rolling through doors or stomping on enemies from above is a great way to catch an enemy off guard. Both are able to stun and damage enemies, often killing weaker enemies in a single strike. Take advantage and finish them off, or even consider using an item to buy you even more time. Now that we've covered some basics, let's dig a little deeper and make the most of your experience. Between levels you'll meet the Collector. He'll allow you to spend the cells that you've found so far. First and foremost, upgrade the Health Flask to unlock healing during play. This can be upgraded to provide up to 5 heals during each level. I also recommend Gold Reserves which allow you to carry over some of the gold between runs. And Recycling of course which allows you to turn unwanted gear into more gold. The backpack is another handy one, allowing you to carry a spare weapon, and only a weapon, with which to swap out. There are even mutations to take advantage of weapons stored in the backpack. The random starter bow and random melee weapon upgrades are another great choice, upgrading the basic starter gear to one that you've unlocked, as is the specialist showroom upgrade which grants access to stores found in each biome. Don't bother unlocking weapons, shields, or other upgrades that you don't plan on using, as it dilutes the chance of getting the weapons you like most. If you like, you can save your cells for forge upgrades by busting down the door, just keep in mind that you will be carrying around more cells to be lost. I only suggest doing this once you're able to beat bosses comfortably. Forge upgrades increase the chances of finding higher quality weapons and items. You'll have the ability to upgrade the forge after beating bosses, such as the concierge. Elite enemies provide great bonuses and can permanently unlock game content. Amulets drop can be worn around your neck, like global damage reduction and other potential secondary bonuses such as extra jumps midair or fire when stomping. Runes can also be dropped. These specific elites fight near large rune or rock formations found on the ground and trap you into the room with them once the fight begins. These elites are found only in biomes after the first one. There are 8 available runes that unlock new content. I'll pop up a chart here if you want to pause it to take a screenshot. You unlock things such as the Vine Ruin, a custom game mode, the daily challenge, teleportation, and a handful of others. Runes are also key to accessing the next choice in levels in some cases. For example, you can't complete the Promenade of the Condemned without first beating the Undead Archer Elite to unlock the Vine Ruin. Try to use weapons and items with similar damage types whenever possible. This allows you to increase, and more importantly, focus damage output as much as possible. Also, try to align the secondary bonuses that each weapon or item provides with that of your other weapons. For example, if you drop an ice grenade that freezes an opponent, it'd be smart to use a weapon that gets a damage bonus to frozen or slowed enemies. Do keep in mind that you can and should spend coins at the forge found between levels to not just upgrade your gear, but to re-roll any bonuses to better align them with each other to maximize the potential of your setup. Another way to take advantage of these synergies, further ramping up your combat prowess, is to select the most appropriate mutations that best match your weapons and playstyle. Thankfully, if you've made some bad decisions or decided on different gear, you can reset your mutation choices for a mere 1000 coins. 
Mutations are a way of further improving your effectiveness on the battlefield. They have the same color scheme as weapons and items, and likewise, they only apply to matching types. Mutations have a variety of effects such as increased damage, reduced timers, slowing enemies after attacks, or regaining health after a successful parry. Take full advantage of them whenever possible. Have fun and make it your own. Play around with the weapons and items available to see what works best for you and puts the biggest smile on your face. Honestly, in Dead Cells there's a little something for everyone and dying really is just the beginning.